So if you caught my earlier episode, I talked about the Buffalo Bills, and on Thanksgiving, the Bills played in Detroit against the Lions. And looking at that Lions team, this Lions team is currently constructed, you can see the seeds of what I expect to be a very good team, potentially next year. But the seeds of a very good team that's well built. And with Buffalo, I talked about um, how the general manager and head coach are both, you know, working magic here that you bring good players in. Um, Brandon Bean brings good players in. Sean McDermott says, great, we're going to make them into great players, not just good players. And Buffalo has done that. You've done it with Allen and Tredavious White, and the list goes on. And I'm wondering here, when is Detroit going to make that jump? How many of their players have made that jump? How many pieces on this roster are set up for success right now? And how many just need that extra year of, you know, extra year of practice, extra year of game time, extra year of experience, whatever it may be, extra year in the NFL. And I think this team is a lot closer than many people think. And I I sort of said this at the beginning of the year. Um, I made a take on you stadium um, that they would make the playoffs. Um, And that does not look like it's going to happen. Although I will say they have a workable schedule that I'll talk about in a moment. But there's been a lot of good with this Detroit team and a whole lot of bad. And I'll start with the bad so we can end on a bit of a positive note. This is a team that is last in the league in scoring defense, last in the league in total defense, last in the league in first downs allowed, bottom two in passing yards per play allowed, rushing yards per play allowed. They've been gashed on the ground. They've allowed 18 rushing touchdowns, second most in the league, over 1,700 yards, second most per game. And even on a per drive basis, they stink. This isn't a case of they're just getting hung out to dry and they're having to face so many more drives than other teams. They're allowing 6.3 yards per play, which is not good. You know, they're allowing over five yards per carry on the ground, over seven yards per pass. That's including sacks. That's including incompletions. It's a bad defense. It's a potentially historically bad defense. It's a unit allowing 28 points per game. And the talent, there is talent there. You have Aiden Hutchinson. You have Malcolm Rodriguez, who have both been pretty good as rookies. You have Jeff Akuda, who did not play against Buffalo, but has taken that next step. And then you look around the rest of the lineup, and it's just, you're either waiting for guys to break out, or it's full of placeholders. So I'll I'll use uh, Armani Aruorie as an example. I thought he was going to have a huge season this year, a breakout season, and he just hasn't been very good. He's among PFF's lowest graded corners. It feels like every week he's grading in the 20s or the 30s or the 40s. You know, he's getting picked on and just it feels weird. And, you know, he's supposed to be a centerpiece of that defense. He's supposed to be a guy you can go to and be your lockdown corner, be that number one guy. Then you have Akuda to build off that. And you have, you'd think, a top corner duo in the league. But are you worried? He's just been just hasn't been good this season. Um, And you look down the group of guys that have played, that have played 10 or 11 games. um, Kirby Joseph has been very good as a rookie. Aiden Hutchinson has been solid. Alex Anzalone is a rotational linebacker type, but he's had to play a bigger role because of the Lions. Deshaun Elliott, a solid player, not elite. He's played 10 games. Jeff Akuda missed the last game, but he's been pretty good this season. Will Harris has played 10 games. He's a rotational defensive back. Malcolm Rodriguez, like I mentioned, has been good. Ari Warrior, not great. Derek Barnes, rotational linebacker. Isaiah Bugs, rotational defensive lineman. Mike Hughes, you know, rotational corner. So you have a lot of snaps being played by guys you don't necessarily want playing all those snaps. Um, Chris Board, Julian Aquara. Um, the the list can goes on and on here. Um, I will say Ali McNeil on the interior had a breakout game um, in week 11 um, against uh, New York. He just dominated the interior. Um, explosive performance from him. But what do the Lions do well? I'll, I'll pivot from what they've done poorly to what they do well. And 
they play offense really well. They have a top 10 scoring offense, a top 10 total offense. They're ninth in first downs. They're sixth in yards per pass. Even with Jared Goff throwing those passes, reminder. Top half the league in rushing yards per attempt. This is a team that scored 35, 36, 24, 45 to start the season. They've scored 27 against Miami, 31 against Chicago, 31 against the Giants, 25 against Buffalo. It's very good statistically. And while they have cooled off a bit after that hot start, they had, you know, almost 400 yards against Philly, 400 yards against Washington, 400 yards against Minnesota, 500 yards against Seattle. Since then, they haven't quite got back, gotten back to 400 yards. But, you know, this team can move the football, and you're you're getting DJ Shark back. You're getting a... Uh, Jamison Williams, you're mixing him into the fold in the next couple weeks. Um, Jamal Williams leads the NFL in rushing touchdowns. DeAndre Swift has been in and out, but he's, you know, back healthy. And offensive line has been reasonable. Um, You have the talent there to be one of the best units in the league. It hasn't quite lived up to the billing. But Penny Sewell, um, Taylor Decker, Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, talented players there. And I think the pieces here are in place for the Lions to have a very good offense and it not be a move the ball just in the fourth quarter when you're trailing by three touchdowns. I think this can be a legitimately scary offense. And as soon as the defense takes a half step forward, I think we could see a playoff team. Can they win the Super Bowl? Maybe not. But if this team is a, you know, 10th in scoring, 24th in defense, that could be a playoff team, you know, especially in a division with Chicago who, is kind of in the same boat now that they can move the ball offensively, but the defense has just been horrendous um, in recent weeks. Green Bay is, you know, without direction. Minnesota is good, but it remains to be seen if they will be great. You know, they're very inconsistent year over year. So this division could be Detroit's for the taking next season. And this brings me to the draft capital. And, At the beginning of the season, it was pretty much a given that the Lions would have a top 10 pick and then a pick in the bottom half, right? So something like the number 8 pick and the number 28 pick. But the Rams have been quite poor, and of course the Rams sent their number 1 pick in the Matthew Stafford trade to the Lions. The Lions could have two top 10 picks. Now I will say, touching on their schedule for a moment, the rest of the way they play just two teams that are above 500, those teams being the Minnesota Vikings, who are in the division, and the New York Jets, who currently are going to start Mike White. So a very winnable stretch of games here. Um, Jacksonville at home, Minnesota at home, at New York Jets, at Carolina, home against Chicago, at Green Bay. They're at 4-7 and seven right now. They have a better record than Jacksonville. They were, you know, a couple plays away from beating Minnesota in week three. The Jets might just have a bad quarterback playing, right? And same thing with Carolina. That Those games are, you know, you'd think, oh, Carolina's decent defensively. The Jets are great defensively, but quarterback play matters, and Jared Goff can be competent while we don't know what we're going to get from the Jets. We don't know what we're going to get from the Panthers. Then Chicago, week 17. Detroit beat them earlier. Green Bay, week 18. Detroit beat them earlier. So we could be in a situation that the Rams pick becomes a top five pick, even a top three pick, competing with Houston and Vegas and teams like that, while this Lions pick settles around 14. I could see them, they could realistically win at least three of their last six games. You know, they could, I think they could beat Jacksonville and maybe take one in the division and then split with the Jets and Panthers. I, I could definitely see a 3-3 three and three or even a 4-2 and two stretch, and the Lions have a playoff opportunity heading into December. And those extra picks that they have accumulated from the Rams, all right, coming in at a huge time, and you're infusing a lot of talent into this team. Last year, you get Jamison Williams um, in a trade with what was the Rams pick. And now you're you're looking at an offense that could be very, very good next year, and you could potentially have a shot at quarterback in the first round of the draft, whether that's a Bryce Young, CJ Stroud, if you're using the Rams pick. And then you have a, let's say, the 10th overall pick, and you can get a 
a Ringo from Georgia. You can go get a, um, I'm not up to date on my draft guys, but you can go get a a, a mid-round edge, a mid-round linebacker, mid-round corner, mid-round safety. You can fill up the defense. And I would go potentially the route of what Carolina did a few years ago and just load up on the defense and say, we have the offense figured out. We, we can, we can do offense, you know, even with Jared Goff, we can do offense, but let's work on the defense. And I think the lions barring a five and one stretch to end this playoff or to end this season, which I wouldn't put it past them. It would be very lions to go five and one, miss the playoffs and screw their team out of a draft pick. But if you're looking at the playoff picture, um, they are currently 10th. They're two games out of, or two and a half games out of a spot. Now, they did lose to Seattle, so that's going to hurt. But the Giants are in a bit of a free fall. They beat the Giants head to head. So potentially you can chase down the Giants. You beat the Commanders head to head. And you're sort of angling here. And maybe you grab that seven seed. Because I don't trust the Giants. The Commanders are a week-to-week team, and then the Falcons are the only team ahead of Detroit. And Detroit's won enough games in conference, and they have you know, a win over Green Bay head-to-head, a win over Chicago head-to-head. They play Carolina. They play Chicago and Green Bay again. This could be a dangerous, maybe not dangerous team, but this could be a team that goes 6-0, six, 5-1, six and, oh, and, and sneaks into the playoffs. I, I've seen weirder things happen. So best of luck for the Lions, best of luck for Lions fans. So your team has a bright future.